my review of El Chapo season one. It's on uh, Netflix. And I speak about it because I uh, recommend it. I got no problem with the fucking drug trade. It's a demand that the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a demand that the world demands. <coughs> now, I've never met anyone who's been uh, forced at gunpoint to snort cocaine smoke crystal or inject heroin. I'm pretty sure it has happened and that it can happen. I think people want to get high on their own free will. And it's as simple I many people simply just want to say, well El Chapo is the evil man. He's the guy that's putting the poison on the streets. Kill him um, knock him out forever. And, uh, it's interesting to see the, the way that the mind of a chopper works. If everything in the stories is correct, and, uh, I'm thinking it would be, because, just from, from what I know, from all the other stories I've seen, this one puts pieces uh, pieces of the puzzle together and makes more sense. Spoiler alerts. I, I like how the season ended. Uh, when he flashbacks to his um, childhood. And, and it ends with his um, first term in prison. No, we shouldn't fucking give criminals fucking direct TV, cable, fucking candy bars, all this fuck, all these fucking luxuries that uh, many of them get nowadays. It should be a plain, boring diet. Oh, because, oh, why am I such a fucking asshole? It's because you've never been like that before. Well, I think if people were to be um, told how scary prison is, boring it is, if I all sold that and get to live forever in one or descends to one for jaywalking, and that it's a prison of. Um, Breaking rocks like Rambo. No, hell no, I'm not going. No, thank you. Nope. But um, that, that's a whole other thing. But when one sees the the evil in these um. in these prisons you know that's to me it, it's logical that only a chapel would um, become stronger because it'd be like uh, it would uh, make his will in my opinion it would make him feel or believe you know what fuck this my story does not end here and I've overcome this much and that much, and now it's time to fucking um, make shit happen. And, uh, well, well, real history shows that it did. See, the one prison, the second prison, I think he's, he's in New York right now, being guarded, so... You know, 
but and then I'm still marinate marinating on it because I think of all the dumb fucks. I know of an idiot recently who got caught up in that shit watching uh, Scarface <laughs> too many times. You know, being in love with that fucking narco corrido music. And nope, nope, I'm not saying that uh, slanging rock is wrong, no, but um, someone put it to me simply when it comes to the business. You gotta pay to play. Because no doubt that you'll get the bitches like El Chapo did. The connections like El Chapo did. The luxuries, the memorable times. <coughs> but when you start seeing the corruption of Police, military, politicians, and, and the common Mexican. It's, it, it, it doesn't. It, it makes me realize that it's not that these aren't fucking space aliens we're dealing with. We're dealing with a common motherfucker. And, and it's disturbing to um, for a lot of people, um, even for me at the time, to hold myself accountable. Because I'm thinking, ah, oh, man, it was uh, it's the Republicans, it's my race, it's the white man, it's my parents, it's my community, it's the gangs, it's um, white people, whatever the fuck, right? And it's as simple as, as this drawing here. Who's going to complete it? Me. Who did, who, um, this Rick and Morty fan art piece. Yes, um, I believe the name is Justin Roiland. Of course, is the creator. And, um, other people from Adult Swim made the soundtrack and, and the voiceovers. But if I want to extend on that, you know, who's, um, Whose goal, mission, or objective is it to design it, sketch it, erase it, upgrade it, ask for feedback, market it, share it? It's up to me. And uh, and that's just a drawing now. How many people do not um, use that same calculation for their own fucking life? Like, nah, dog, but you don't understand, man. It's the man. And, and it, it bugs me more when it's fucking supposed men saying this. No, nah, man, I'm not in charge of my life with someone else. And, and you just see potential be thrown away. Tapped out. Give up. Get knocked out. Get knocked down and, and not get up again. And I, I think it's it's fucking pathetic and many fuckers I say, damn dog, you fucking need to be kinder, happier. You know, appreciate this one. I'm like, motherfucker, if I did not appreciate this fucking moment, this fucking moment, this fucking pencils, they would just be collecting dust. I'd be out just uh, fucking around. Getting paid and acting a fool. Getting paid at the expense of uh, other people's um, insecurities, naivete, is that the word, naivete or naiveness? I don't know what the word is, ignorance or, or big hearts. And I don't think that's an honorable way of living, if, especially if one can I forget where I learned this. I 
something with some with some rap uh, with some rap video. Was it some rap video? Some some homie shit. But but if it's something like you know, don't worry about getting a slice of the pie. Create your own fucking pie. And and to me that was a fucking breakthrough because so many people believe no oh, dog it's like if I could just um you know work for this company and make more sales I'll get a bigger promotion and more profit and a bigger paycheck and and, and it's these lazy fucks a lot of lazy cowards lazy cowards who are real macho men real strong men badass men they got webbles they got balls, they're, 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 they're real men, you know? Well, let someone else fork up quarter million, half a million, one million dollars. Their whole save, their whole life savings, loans and their friends' loans and other people's money to risk um, creating a business either by buying a franchise or starting off something off of, off of their own. It's like, and then say, you know, you know, I deserve more money, man. You got all this money. I deserve some of it. Fuck you. Fuck you. And uh, I had a friend, um, meet up. He made a lot of money. Very comfortable life. Very comfortable. Um, he he retired at 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 a fucking very young age. He he doesn't have to work no more. He's done. He doesn't stop. And that dude. Um, You give him headaches. He's the kind of guy that uh, you want to start some bullshit, create a union, play um, play the victim card. Fuck it, shut it all down. We'll just start all over again. And I wonder if just more businesses started doing that. Just um, trying to think. Because even American Apparel, fuck it. Uh, Sherney, Shaveney, whatever the CEO's name was. No, I'm not fucking saying you should fucking grab some bitch's ass and just walk around with your dick out in the fucking office and be everyone should be cool with it. No. Come on, man. It's uh, <laughs> unless uh, unless everyone's cool with it or demands it, uh, you know, or fuck it, you know. But a couple people, um, when he sexually harassed or sexually made advances towards and shit like that, I don't think it was rape. I don't think he was ever charged with rape, but sexual harassment or some other shit. And that led to eventually him losing the company. And now, fucking, um, I remember going to that building, um, buying some shirts there, and no, oh, now it's a fucking, it's empty. But all those people are now lost without jobs. And they're making a comeback, I believe. Made in Canada now, American Apparel made in Canada. I'm losing my train of thought here because just the amount of people that um, lack the courage, not the fucking brains, 
not the ability, but the fucking courage to start on their own, start off on their own adventure, their own life. So when I see El Chapo and the corruption of a common person, I believe two of our greatest emotions are um, fear, fear and greed, I think. If those are not the two strongest emotions, they're two of the strongest emotions. You know, but if El Chapo had never existed, the good thing about him is that, you know, even before I heard of El Chapo, I heard about the Ariano Felix brothers. And those motherfuckers were, shit, they did not play. Fucking gangster maniacs. But remember, um, the last story I heard about them was, um, I don't know if it's one of the brothers, one of their associates. God, I believe got killed by a clown at some kid's party in broad daylight. And the dude got away, the clown got away in, um, in broad daylight, even though the area was surrounded with, by cops and military. Murder happened in Mexico, so I forget what I forget what tourist place if it was Acapulco or Rosarito. I forget. You know, whatever the fuck it is you're doing in life, I believe that it's possible to be successful, lucrative, profitable. And you know, even if the odds are heavily stacked against you, right? man. You know, get ready to fail, but don't get don't get ready to quit. And there's a huge difference. There, a huge difference. You know, I think I've had moments of doubt and I'm thinking, man, is this gonna work? Is that gonna happen? Let me take a breath. Hold on. Hold on. Think, let me think. But as far as doubt saying, no, it's not going to work, it's impossible. Who am I? No. If anything, it's more like, um, fuck, how much damage will I take from this hit? Will it slow me down, set me back in time, throw me back in time? Um, will I be able to recover? How soon can I recover? 
What will I lose? What will I have gained? I'm thinking back about the guards that are in, um, in Chapel's prison and You know, even Guantanamo fucks, Guantanamo Muslim fucks that are <clears throat> over there. Let me get some water. <clears throat> I think this motherfucker should just be kept at a distance, isolated. Death penalty? Likely also. Guilty of crimes? Yeah. But the mo moment we start fucking torturing those motherfuckers, yeah, it may feel good. Be like, yeah, man, I'm getting revenge. This for 9/11, Afghanistan. This for Iraq. If you don't kill that fucking piece of shit, that fucker's gonna get out. Tell the world what happened to him, and he will only create a fan club. <coughs> support respect respect from um, his clique whatever tribe he's claiming ISIS was wasabi is it wasabi or wahhabi Shiite, Sunni. But if you simply just you know, keep them away, if you want to be a fucking tree hugger, keep them away from doing more harm, more destruction. I think that'll be effective, but. Also, Chapel's guards just beating on him. Telling them to forget uh, his life of luxury and that he was wrong. No, you, you can tell by the very end of the the uh, season that he's not broken. That he remembers his uh, his goal in life, which was to become a boss, become number one. And uh, he eventually became top dog. But how many people have been, uh, how many lives have been destroyed since then because of that? Police, military, thugs, and civilians that just fucking are going on with their lives, you know? But, but I can't say that even those civilians are innocent because, you know, it's their kids. Their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their aunties, their sons, daughters that are um, become that are the next generation of drug dealers. And all these fucking these people in prison. Many people don't believe that all these fuckers in prison, all these people in motorcycle gangs and street gangs and prison gangs and the fucking assassins, hitmen, homicide of maniacs, serial killers, they're, they're all um, aliens. No, no, they, we, we, we never um, grew up with them, we didn't raise them, no, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't me, man, I was parent numero uno, I was number one, I'm the best. I read them the Bible. Don't you know? Come on. Do I look like someone that creates monsters? Of course not. Forget about it. And now my, my, 
My mind's going in a cycle now. Because again, we want to point the finger at, oh, that's the bad guy, you know, I'm the good guy. And again, I'm not fucking saying, um, you know, treat all these prisoners with love, you know, give them hugs. Because I think some, I think some of these guys are are lost. Guys and girls, they're lost. They're done. They're um, damaged goods. No, no, man, they could be saved. All right, all right then. Create a fucking um, a Airbnb for prisoners, people out of prison. There's a lot of people that don't have homes come out of prison. Look into it. Mr. Fucking, Mr. and Mrs. Fucking, um, Savior of Humanity. And some people say, no, dog, but you see, that's the homie, man. I'm thinking, fuck, man. If you guys could imagine my life right now where I would be if I would have just said if you would have said no come on I'm the homie I'm the hunger I'm the friend I'm the best friend I'm family do what I say trust me how much trouble I would have been in how many things I would have not done in life very likely I'd be dead very very likely if I would have said yeah okay been, been a stupid agreeable motherfucker okay all right I don't want to hurt their feelings, okay. And in theory, you know, fucking, oh, we should save everyone, you know. They worked on the Disney movie. They worked on TV. They worked on these 80s, 90s, and other TV shows. They saved the people. Come on. Check out that show, man. Check it out. I hated the fucking narco show with uh, the Pablo Escobar days or whatever. That was fucking lame. Did not like that. But I did like El Chapo much more. <laughs>